This is about someone I've been unable to get over. It's called Penance. I miss you with the weight of a million clouds floating overhead, soaked through with the soot of a bankrupt crematorium, the contents of their furnaces overflowing with a hodgepodge of charred limbs, reaching out to a heaven unable to receive them until their missing undertakers have returned to complete the entire process of incineration. I've been rendered blind, deaf, and dumb by the pain that racks my mutilated body, yet I manage to release a sound akin to a moan of ascent whenever a command is hurled in my direction. On top of this, a fractured love sits atop the sling around my broken arm. How hard it's been to stifle these cries that sift through the cracks of a skull you once nurtured into a perfect embrace, curving around me with the grace of a faithful and steady orbit. All has been gray since you turned the light off. All has been a dismal prison surrounded by rain and starving innocence. No longer blessed with the charity your luminous skin once provided, pressing up against this temperamental gloom to absorb the runoff from my spleen and hemorrhaging arteries. I am doomed to stumble through this dismal plane of existence with nothing on my mind save to expend as little energy as possible in the only chore I'm deemed capable of managing, that being to tend to the burden of my own meaningless life as quickly as possible. So that it might end in a sleep that lasts an eternity. Without the halo of your smile shining over my head, my thoughts are pools of stagnant mud. What few words I speak, no more than rotten emissions expelled from a pair of disintegrating gums. Was it so long ago that you graced me with your blessed interest? Though it's been a century since you dropped me from a sky made up of your most earnest promises, your dark eyes still throb in the foreground of every thought that shuffles past me. Against orthodoxy, you'd cross the median between priestess and penitent to rest on the lap of the accursed. In the inky quagmire of the confession booth, you wrapped your breast around my sins to hush the hiss of my famished tongue. Your willingness to renounce your robes for the sake of sharing your life with a heathen would catapult you from sainthood to goddess. For in the inverted reflection of my diabolism, your disposition for renunciation would prove superhuman. I, it was in the inside, it was inside the sheltering womb of your church that I was reborn. The flames of our proprietor's death wish reducing every last vestige of the living to cinders around us. Given that your church would be the only structure left standing in the aftermath of our apocalyptic union. It would take me years before I'd register your absence in that dark room once undivided. Without closing the shutter between us, you'd left me to join the choir in the chancel. Demons wearing pious masks. They'd been preaching lies to dismantle the temple of our sacred symbiosis. From the very beginning, this greed has always been a chorus of nails on a chalkboard, barring us from the sanctuary of the cloister with their presumptuous decrees. In the meantime, the ornery phantom of your absence continues to churn away inside my stomach without hope of remission. The trauma of having been wrenched away from you still reverberating like a, a death knell descending from a cracked, an aged belfry looming high above us in a succession of dismal 
twilights. Looking down at you from where I hanged, nailed to my cross, I cursed you as you washed my bloody feet. Tied to a rope wrapped around my neck, my memory of this incident is atrophied into a leaden corpse I dra dragged behind me. <clears throat> From heaven, I denied them. The orphan slaves of my savagery until continue to hurl epithets over my shoulder, their blue lips lacerating my bent back with a whip of my own shame. But this bastardized grave remains empty so long as the forgiveness of your soul still hovers on that dim horizon before me. Out of the wounds incurred for my treachery and those who've abandoned me, a destiny for both of us will be extracted. Those years of agonizing surgery, surgery will prove enlightening in the end. After it's been completely upturned, deconstructed, and then put back together, it's guts uh, uprooted and turned inside out. Your betrayal will come to be, be defined quite elementarily as a necessary trial to be survived in the service of edification. Representing the idyllic student, I'll constitute both pilgrim and prisoner, prisoner sealed beautifully within the comforting confines of a, of a perfect circle. In tandem to the stinging pulse of the average dullard's regrets, I will go on praying until this void of infinite mourning has been suited closed with my penance. In all your suffering, your supplicating womb would descend into the barren shore where I still find myself a castaway washed up with nothing save a prayer for the goddess who deserted me. In dissolution I weep, hoping that one day these tears will make contact with the ocean of our shared passions. Why doesn't the drivel descending from my singed eyes not evaporate every time it makes impact with the deserted dunes of your love, but instead wanders the floors of the sandy abyss like beads of mercury in search of an oasis. Amidst the silence that drills itself into my mangled heart, I will persist in these appeals, hoping that one morning I'll look up from this blackened floor to find you standing over me, your silhouette embraced by a sunlight that would come to define the future we'd share together from that day onward. The sullen nightmares that had been overseeing my existence, dispelled by your glorious presence. 